Have you ever been in that awful situation where someone is coming towards you and you can sort of vaguely remember their name? You're like, 50% of me really wants to say Paul or, or John, George, or the other one. Well, congratulations, because you're experiencing quantum mechanics. Cool. So there's this underlying idea in quantum mechanics called superposition. The idea behind it being that a quantum object can be in multiple states at once, and that those states are completely indistinguishable until a measurement is made on the system. So going back to before, if we treat our situation in terms of quantum mechanics and try and make an answer for this dude's dot name question mark equals, we come up with a series of probabilities as to what this guy might be called. 50% John, 30% George, 10% Ringo, 10% the other one, all of which sum to 100% and step us precariously towards our oncoming social faux pas. This equation is called a wave function, a name that comes from the contributions to the probabilities which are often imaginary and so represented in terms of complex functions or wave equations. And if that made absolutely no sense to you, that's totally fine. The idea you can basically surmise as these probabilities can ebb and flow, sort of like a wave, i.e. wave function. When a measurement is finally taken on a system, a physicist describes this as collapsing the wave function, which basically means all but one of the probabilities collapses down to zero, and you reveal which state your system is actually in. Hi, Paul! Mrs. Miggins? I'm so sorry. So a lot of people might be familiar with the Schrodinger's cat thought experiment, which basically you put a cat in a box, arguably the best place for a cat. You then put some poison in that box, arguably also a great place for poison. This poison is released by a radioactive source which will decay randomly and kill the cat. So without looking in the box, you have absolutely no idea whether the cat is alive or dead. So when you go to describe its wave function, you say, cat dot is alive question mark equals some probability of being alive, some probability of being dead. And so the cat is both alive and dead at the same time. So when you go to take a measurement on the system here, opening the box, what you actually are doing is revealing what state the cat is in. Huh, dead. Go again? Yeah? But a lot of people will turn around and say, but the cat never was actually alive and dead, was it? It was alive, it was briefly dying, and then it was dead. It was never any combination of the two, it was one or the other. And I would agree, because a cat is not a quantum mechanical object. But do we have a substitute analogy that sort of better sheds light on this idea in the macroscopic world? Yes, we do. You'll also be delighted to know it requires some biscuits. So off we pop. Okay, so we step into line, a line which ends in 12 separate self-checkout tills, because who needs human interaction? And just in the cat in the box is waiting, we also find ourselves in a quantum mechanical system, here with 12 different endpoints. Now very clearly we are in line for all 12 tills, and there is no significant fact about any one of them that says we should reach one over any of the others. And so there's too much randomness in the system to be able to calculate where we'll end up or to be able to say affirmatively that we are in line for any one of these tills in particular. Ah, till four. I feel like my wave function might have just collapsed. And now think, prior to this point, we were in a superposition of all these endpoints. We collapsed the wave function by queuing because we are English and that is how we do. Step back a moment and realize that at 9 a.m. this morning, you set in place a series of events that led you to this superposition. Technically, you were part of this superposition at 9 a.m. this morning and last week, and last month, and last year, and the day you were born. Everything you have done in your life has been plodding you solemnly down this wave function towards this one measurement on this system. So those biscuits had better be worth it. Congratulations, you can now explain quantum mechanical superposition to your grandmother. So do. If you like this sort of thing, then maybe subscribe and I'll do a few more. Bye.